Hello and welcome back to Soul Creek, where we'll be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after Alex and Logan had a little conversation about their relationship, where it seems that they want to take it to the next level, kind of. Um, Logan has, I guess, expressed interest in their relationship going further than just whatever was possible because of the, um, the, uh, the indulgence. And, um... Alex, of course, decided, like, yes, let's do this. So, yeah. You can tell how uh, thrilled I am by that. Anyways, eventually, they both went their separate ways, Logan going to the school to go teach, and Alex basically uh, having to be the... um. Uh, having to go wrangle Milo because apparently he snuck off to go zone baiting again because apparently he's become obsessed with the uh, the demon and I guess you could say his affinity for the four is very 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 strong uh, to the point where if Alex wasn't there I'm pretty sure that Milo would have been uh, Logan's acolyte but yeah anyways um so yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I do know something big or major, I suppose, is going to happen right now, so yeah. On the way, I'm distracted by an unusual commotion. It sounds like something has riled the villagers up. Some kind of angry mob is forming. It's coming from near the trading square. Alert, I detour across to locate the source of the commotion. A crowd is moving through the streets. Clashing verbally with the other tribeswoman, I count a dozen warrioresses in near identical metal armor. They seem to be searching for something. Alex, careful! Their armor is iron, and the tribeswoman don't have smiths who can forge anything like this. They're not draconi. A figure steps through the crowd determinately. He's the only one dressed differently. The draconi wardens flinch nervously at the sight of him. He scans the square, head craning over them all. He spots me from across the crowd. There! Eyes locked with mine, the tiger calmly tugs a small axe from his belt and raises it above his head. Fuck! I got you. The axe slams into a wooden wall behind me with a thud, embedding itself into it. If Vite hadn't moved me in the last second, it would have split my skull in half. I whirl about and stare at my would-be murderer with horrid stupor. The saber tooth stares back, gaze boiling with stoic venom before I can comprehend what the hell is going on. He reaches for another axe. Hey! Are you fucking crazy? Taki charges between us, blocking the attacker's path with her spear and snarling furiously. Move! My heart is racing. I don't know what to do. Run? Fight? Hide? I... Just stand there behind Taki, eyes locked carefully on my aggressor. The fuck do you think you're doing, Kaius? Back down! Taki, move! I have newfound respect for Taki's insane courage. Kaius is as monstrously huge as Loken, perhaps even bigger. His roar makes my skin crawl. Kaius's mob forms up behind him, and Taki's wardens join her side. A circle of shocked Draconi tribeswomen form a ring around us, observing the scene. Mm. Stay behind, Taki. I'm out of my depth here. I know Bite can probably keep me safe, but I stay behind Taki regardless. Draconian Reptile clans are supposed to be allies, you fucking dumb chode! Kai's points furiously at me. Why is he alive? Kill it now! None of your fucking wax, asshole. Back up, or I'll rip your nuts off and stuff them up your ass. Enough! As Dravonia roars above the crowd, a nervous hush sweeps the crowd. She marches between both sides, blocking Kaius's view of me, her eyes burning with fury at him. It's weirdly eerie. I've never heard the village so quiet, yet so riled up. What is the meaning of this, Kaius? The tiger gestures at me with renewed fury, not perturbed by the chief's arrival. Dravonia, that's not some drooling pet. It's a human. Kill it! His name is Alex. 
and he is one of us. Explain yourself. Caius's face drops in disbelief, as though the world just fell from beneath his feet. One of... What are you talking about? He is Loken's acolyte. If you harm him, there will be no peace between us. There's a stunned silence. Caius, frozen in place, stares between us in rigid disbelief. He is a Zephyr. Have you lost your mind, sister? I gop at Travonia. She never mentioned that. She ignores my outraged glare and keeps her focus on her brother. Alex is Draconi. How dare you presume to decide his fate? His people wrought the cascade. The negative ones are their fault. The informed are their fault. W hey, I had nothing to do with the cascade and neither did my people. I'm just... Dravonia silences me with an urgent gesture. Don't be ridiculous, brother. Alex is just a lost soul. Logan and I take responsibility. Any consequences are... The consequences will be on all of us. You will let him blunder around our woods like an imbecile with an open flame? Are you mad? Caius backs away and pivots around, bellowing furiously at the sizable crowd that has gathered in stunned silence. Are all of you mad? No one dares speak up. Everyone stands silent, like scolded, scold children. The mountains themselves seem to cower. We've been through hell together, all of us. One wrong step, one curious glance, and the black ocean takes us all. His voice lowers, though his impassionate speech continues. Talking moves to stop him, and Dravonia angrily gestures her to be still. Your Black Runner said that. The one that you, all of you, chose. The Black Ocean, Loken called it. And beneath it, what does he call them? Sharks. The crowd murmurs nervously. You know what I speak of. The negative ones. Those demons. Whatever you call them here. Every slip-up is a ripple in that ocean. Make no mistake. Disturb those waters and they will rise up to meet us. My heart lurches when he points at me. I shrink, aware of every pair of eyes on me. This human will wade into the black zone and disturb its every... Oh, gods, just shut up, man! Taki steps out, ignoring Dravonia's attempts to rein her in. Are y'all listening to this malignant shit funnel? Who the fuck plucked your pussy hairs out this morning, guys? Kai sneers at Taki. This pussy has a few hairs of common sense still unplucked. You, on the other hand, are deluded, badger of Carmine. Taki bares her teeth and hisses at the name that he gives her. Ooh, careful of the big scary ocean. You don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. She spreads her arms wide in challenge, and he stands his ground. Alex, don't even remember his people. Poor guy just woke up here. He doesn't know shit, so back down. Kai stalls, bewildered. Say that again. She's telling the truth, Kai's. Alex has no connection to the Zephyr at all. He'd never even heard of the negative ones before he awoke. Is that the truth, human? I bare my teeth, seething. Yes. I don't know how I got here. I'm not some omen of apocalypse. I'm harmless. Harmless. Don't be fooled by his coyness. Tell them what you did to my three exiles. So that's how he found out about me. At once, I know that I've said something wrong. Dravonia tries to silence me with a desperate snarl, but it's too late. Hear that, sister. He was in the Black Zone the same day as the Frenzy. Kais turns back around to address the entire crowd. Two nights ago, something aroused the Black Zones. The negative ones went berserk. I found nine dead at the Riptide borders. God knows how many others have disappeared. I'm speechless. Nine? Because of what I did? I knew there'd be consequences for my searching, but I thought Milo's near miss had been the extent of it. Never, never have the zones behave like that, until the moment that you let Alex go gallivanting around them. That's not some insane coincidence. It's him. The balance is already tipping because of him. Alex wasn't responsible for the frenzy. The raving Sabretooth stares at me, his eyes ablaze with distrust. Do you deny it? I... Alex, lie. But... Just do it. No. Logan and I were just there for training. You see, I appreciate your concern, brother, but Alex is one of my people, 
and you will not interfere with his business. Kai steps over to her sister, his fury melting into an almost pleading whine as he appeals to her. Your endearing curiosity will get us all slaughtered. We'll all go the same way as Ilira. It wasn't my decision. Alex is free because Logan deemed it. The Black Runner's right is absolute and I stand by his judgment. This is ludicrous. When I was told the living Zephyr had been spotted near your village, I came here to warn you. When I saw him, I assumed you didn't realize what he was. Maybe you mistook him for a rodent. I scowl. But you knew? Worse, you've taken him in? If it were up to me, Alex would have been in chains. I trust Loken. I trust Alex. That is the end of the matter. You are provoking the Blackstones. After everything that we've been through, did our sister's death mean nothing to you? Dravonia snarls and steps over to Caius, meeting him face to face. Her patience has snapped. You weren't the only one who loved her, Caius. There is a silence. The two chieftains stare coldly at one another. Dravonia twists her head around to the crowd, studying the sea of nervous draconian eyes. Go about your business, everyone. This is between my brother and I. Nobody moves. Go! Slowly, person by person, the gathered crowd begins to dissipate. Taki and her wardens remain by my side. Caius's entourage stays behind them. Between us, the siblings drop their voices to a whisper. Their voices too quiet to hear. I sense their fury at one another dissolve into sentiment. Fight? What are they saying? There is a scrambling of static, and their voices become clear as day. You promised me. I should have told you. I knew this would hurt you. They speak with a tender, familiar hush. It's a far cry from the aggression that they were leading with moments ago. How could you do this? I knew that you wouldn't. I never wanted you to know. This is how it is, brother. He is one of us, and I'm going to help him. Caius inhales, and Travonia grasps his shoulders reassuringly. I'm surprised by the affection displayed as they lean forwards, touching foreheads. If you try and harm the human again, you will have lost both your sisters, and I will never forgive you. Do you trust me? After a tense pause, Caius nods somberly. I trust you with the world, but not the Black Zones. The two of them stand up straight. I flinch when the imposing Sabertooth looks at me, mouth curled in distaste. Do I have your word that you won't harm him? I return Caius's glare, daring him to try lobbing another axe on my face. Alex, was it? Yep. I won't harm him. But I need to. I... The tiger scrunches his face up in anguish. I need to think on this. All of this. I... I need to see Alira. Dravonia nods. We'll go together. We'll talk. Taki, see that Caius's guardians are tended to. Take Alex to Aeon. This has all been a misunderstanding. There will be no more violence. I stare behind me at the axe embedded in the wall, then afford Dravonia a stunned stare. I'm not sure if I am relieved or furious. Let me handle this, Alex. I'll call for you once I've smoothed things over with my brother. Dravonia leads Caius away from the crowd, leaving my head reeling. The things that he said about me, about my people. Gods, if this clan wasn't wary enough of me already. Hey. Taki nudges my arm. I jump, startled. What'd you think of Kai's then? Scowling with annoyance, I point feverishly at the axe still lodged by my head. He certainly leaves a lasting impression. What the hell's going on, Taki? Why did he try and kill me? Hey, I know Kai's is pretty well. He's a wounded kitty. And you being here is rubbing salt in the wound. Wounded because of Alira? Yeah, yeah. It was rough. I was there. Alira got informed. It's a bad way to go. Caius loved his sister more than anything. He thinks his half your cost a cascade, so yeah. That's why he hates you. Thinks you're gonna start it all over again. Don't worry. You ain't a proper Eileen unless Caius has tried to kill you at least once. I grimace. A horrible sense of dread has accompanied Caius' arrival and his message. Is... is it true? Nine people? I don't know, brat. First I heard of it. He's probably making shit up so that you look bad. Forget it. 
but I did cause the frenzy. I tore the algorithm from the rhinestone dish. Oh gods, this is such a mess. Hey, chin up. Kaius ain't someone that you want as an enemy. I don't want Kaius as my enemy, but if he's gonna keep throwing axes on my face, he won't try that again. Just let Dravonia handle it. Come on, I'm taking you to Aeon. Best you lay low till she strains this out. Taki whistles at her wardens. Hey, ladies, find Caius's lot somewhere to hang out. Somewhere out of sight. She beckons for me to follow. I do so hurriedly. After Caius directed the eyes of the whole village onto me, staying out of sight seems wise. Bite. What do we do about this guy? We are dealing with someone new. We need to learn more about him. Tread lightly. He is a chieftain of the Riptide Clan. They're the biggest tribe in Ilea. Best let Dravonia handle him. And if he tries anything else, I'll make sure that we dodge anything that he throws at us. Even with Bite's reassurance, my head is buzzing from shock. As Taki and I march to Aeon's hut, I just stare at the ground, lost in thought. Oi, rat! My head snaps up. Pull yourself together, will you? No, many people have tried to kill me. Happens all the time. Just keep dodging axes like they're flying pussies come to snatch a spunk. She nudges me and cackles. Do you think people will believe him? I swear I didn't cause a frenzy. I didn't mean to. Who cares? Can you even call yourself a black runner if people don't think you're a tainted omen of doom? None of the others have tried to murder me for it. What's going to happen next? Remember what I told you about the unspoken law of the land? Yeah, never meddle in the Black Runner's affairs, but... Damn right, Rack. So that's what happens next. Your business. I appreciate Taki trying to dismiss this whole thing, but it isn't working. Kai says going to complicate things. I just know it. So, Kai and Dravonia are siblings. I had no idea. Ah, that. Yeah. She don't tell a lot of people. They were triplets, see? Alira, Kaius, and Dravonia. When Alira died, Dravonia and Kaius drifted apart big time. Real nasty falling out. Um, they've patched things up now, but... Hey, Kaius is just Kaius. Folks talk about him like he's the biggest turd in the river, but he can be pretty reasonable. Kataki points to Aeon's hut. Go on. Just hide out in there for a while, yeah? Give the chief some time to talk some sense into the kitty cat. Could you let Loki know what happened? Maybe don't mention the axe throwing. He'll probably rip Caius's head off. <laughs> That'd be a sight. Leave it with me, rat. See you around. She pats my shoulder with a smile. I return a forced one, then make my way inside to see Aeon. Whoa, Aeon. That looks heavy. He's trying to stack a heavy box on top of another. He's clearly struggling, so I rush over and grab it. Ack! Eh! Let go. I got it. Aeon shoves me away. Stuff it, human. I can still lift stuff. I can, I can. It's easy to see where Loki got his stubbornness from. I move to help him carry the weight regardless. With a thud, we get the box in place. Aeon steps away, clutching his side. Ah, years ago, I could have lifted these things one-handed. I could have. I didn't think moles were so strong. Oh, yes, yes. Not many moles like me these days. Can't say that I've seen many. Can't say... Anyway, you're here, Alex. You're here. What can I be doing for you, hmm? Hmm? I huff. I, uh... Well... Dravonia probably thinks that I should stay out of sight for a while. There was, um... An incident. Oh? Are you alright? Are you? I am now, but, uh, well... I could have been killed. <gasps> what now? Tell me! Tell me! Without wasting much detail... I recount the details of Caius' appearance to Aeon. He listens carefully and wordlessly. When I speak of how he accused me of being responsible for the frenzy in the Black Zones, the mole's brow creases with concern. Did I really kill those people, Aeon? It may not have been true, Alex. It may not. Caius has no proof, has he? No. Didn't stop him ranting about it in front of the entire village. I see, I see. I drop my voice to a concerned whisper. If he finds out Loken and I were involved, he'll kill me for sure. He already tried once. Ha! <laughs> he won't, he won't, he won't, he won't. It's not his business. Don't be so glum. 
You didn't know what would happen when you pulled the algorithm out, did you? How could you have? Well... Hmm? I... I didn't know. But Loken did warn me not to. When Aeon frowns, I wince guiltily. I didn't listen. I was... Ugh. I was so angry seeing all those ruins. All my people. My life. Even my memories. There's a pause. Alex, tell me something. If you were back there right now, if you knew, would you make the same choice? Would you? Mm. No. Aeon is quiet for a moment, watching me. He didn't miss my hesitation. The mole hops over, pensively taking my hand in his and patting it softly. Alex, we don't know what truths you may or may not find. Soon you may have to make a choice like that again. No one else should get hurt over this. I'm sure, I'm sure, and I'm sure that it's easy to think that now. But Alex... His voice drops to a solemn, sincere tone. I haven't heard him use it before. When you discover what might be at stake, your entire identity, just be ready to make that choice. He lets go of my hand. I feel... odd. Unsure of myself. For now, Alex, you have to continue. You do. This algorithm is important. It means that you are here for a reason. There's no point in letting Kai stop you. There isn't. So, let's talk plans. Plans, plans, plans. What's your plan? You and Logan? Mm? Mm? Oh, uh, uh... <clears throat> we know the next part is the Boneyard. At uh, Devil's Crepe. We're not entirely sure what we're looking for, though. Mmm, I see, I see. Tell me, tell me. I need all the pieces of the puzzle, Alex. What is the algorithm? Images? Ideas? Words? I could draw it for him. I grumble uncertainly. Do you have something that I can draw with? After fixing me with a questioning glare, Aeon spins around on his stool and tugs open a metal drawer. Charcoal and parchment, okay? He lays it out on the counter next to me. I shuffle over and grab the charcoal piece, staring at the blank old page before me. I shut my eyes and let Bite take over. He guides my hand blindly across the parchment. My eyes snap open. Drawn out before me with flawless accuracy are the symbols that I'd seen in my mind only this morning. They seem so benign. I was expecting something unsettling, but they're just weird drawings. Yet in my head, they feel different. I can't explain it. It hurts to try. I push the parchment over the counter to Aeon nervously watching his reaction. The mole peers at them, head inching closer to the parchment. How did you do this? I blow out of my cheeks and shrug, then tap my forehead casually. Aeon isn't convinced. He stares between me and the symbols on the counter. I am not sure that I can make anything out of this, Alex. A map? A key? A tool? Who knows? But what you've drawn here is... Nothing. Nothing. Just... Nothing. There must be more to all of this, no? Should we tell him? I wince. Aeon can't help solve this puzzle, unless he has all the pieces. There's nothing else for it. Yeah. I have, um... Man, where to begin? This could really get me killed if people misunderstand. Especially with Kai's potentially sticking his nose in. It's going to confuse a lot of people. Aeon taps his claws on the counter head flicking back to the drawn symbols. Can't be any more confusing than all of this. Go on then, let's hear. I have a sentient computer program trapped inside of my mind. C come again? His name is Bind. He's not sure how he got there or who created him. Hmm, right. Uh, right then. He can control my body, too. Now that, Alex? That's mad. I manage a smirk. Boy, boy, boy. I'm not even going to pretend that I understand all of that. I'm not. I'm not. We're talking about the old Zephyr machine intelligence, no? Yeah, but I don't remember AI like Bind ever existing. I am one of a kind. Let alone one with its head so far up. Its own ass. Stop, 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 Alex. Just stop. Let me think. Let me think. 
I watch Aeon trace the tip of his angled finger claws around the enigmatic shapes I'd drawn only a moment ago. This is... He shakes his head in resignation. Sorry, Alex, but a being like that in your mind? Your body? Nope. And these marks here? That's a bit beyond me, I'm afraid. It's concerning. How is this bite sustaining itself within you? How does it control your body? I don't see anything unusual when I examined you. I didn't. There could be Zephyr technology in my brain. Or I might not really be human. I don't know. And this bite doesn't know anything? Nah. He's kind of a moron. Rude. He speaks to you then? Yeah. It's getting him to shut up that's tricky. Rude. Aeon looks alarmed. Just how much does Bite see? Here. Everything I do. Hmm. I see, I see. Alex, I've never heard of anything like this. Never seen anything like this. He taps the drawn symbols again. And I don't know what this algorithm is going to lead to. It could be bigger than we thought. Aeon shakes his head, breathing a heavy sigh. What a mess, what a mess. Have you tried to get rid of this AI, have you? I freeze, so does Bite. You mean, like, delete him? I, uh, well, I don't think I can. Alex, this creature has an alarming amount of power over you, it does. If you can get rid of it, you should. You should, you should. Man, no one ever trusts the AI. It's okay, Aeon. He's a friend. Think, Alex. Bite can control you. But can you control him? Can you? Uh... No. I mean, he does everything that I tell him to, th although... I wince. He, um... Isn't obligated to. If you did need to get rid of him, how? If it can control you, Alex, it can defend itself. He wouldn't let you. He wouldn't. That'd never happen. It is not my job to make your decisions for you. Well, he has a point. What if I did want to delete you? You can't, though. And if I could? There is a pause. Would you want to? I don't know how the sands bite. Would you stop me? If you wanted me gone, I'd go. You're sure? I am not really alive, Alex. What does it matter? Uh, what? Hey, come on, Bite. I never actually... I sigh. You all right there, Alex? Sorry, yeah. I think I just upset him. He can get upset, can he? Bite's been building a personality from my experiences. It makes him seem really real. Like, really real. And an asshole sometimes. Hmm. It's all a bit odd, Alex. I can see why you urgently need some answers. There must be an explanation. There must. I tap the drawing of the algorithm. I know this will sound weird, but do you know anything about Soul Creek? There was a message about it in the algorithm. The old mountain in the north? Hmm. I've never seen anything odd about it. I know it's got a bit of a reputation, but I've never imagined that it was anything more than superstition and misfortune. I didn't. But who knows? Who knows? There could be more. There could be. I frown. Whatever secret Soul Creek holds... It seems that I'd be the first to discover it. Mm, sorry, Aeon. I know this is... Well, it's a lot. I don't understand it either. Mmm, my boy. Boy, boy. Amol shakes his head, sighing. The more we delve into the mysteries, the more it seems to be Blackrunner business. This path is for you and Loken, not an old fart like me. But still, I'll help however I can. What time do you and Loken plan to leave tomorrow, hmm? First thing, I guess. Uh, it'll be a long journey to the Devil's Crag. Why? Oh, long journey, long journey. Hmm, perhaps before you leave, we should visit the Great Barrier in the morning? The Auto Monks owe us a loan of their equipment. I can give you the full examination I promised. That'd be great. We'll make time. Relax, we'll get to the bottom of this. I can't imagine how much stress it's been. But I am here for you, Alex. In whatever way I can be. I smile, placing my own hand on top of his. Thanks, Aeon, for everything. You've done a lot for me. I can see why Loki thinks so highly of you. Aeon withdraws his hands, dismissing me with a modest shrug. Nonsense. I am a big drag on the hound I am. 
He thinks the world of you. Bah, well, he gave me a lot of good memories he did. Never had a family I didn't. Never did. But being here in the Draconi clan, that was close. Very close. Anyway, Alex, anyway, enough of this. First things first, we need to give the Dravonian time to keep Caius under wraps. I grumble. Do you think that he's going to be a problem? Hard to say, hard to say. If he thinks that you'll cause any disturbance to the Black Zones, perhaps, perhaps. But he is loyal to his sister. Very loyal. He won't break faith with her. He won't. Of that, I am sure. Do you know him well? Aeon cackles with laughter. Ha! Alex, I am a scholar of the old knowledge. He wanted me dead long before you. I manage a smirk. We have a common hater. Oh, yes. If it were up to him, I'd be dead. Dead, dead. But no, Dravonia wouldn't allow it. So, safe. And if I am safe, Alex, you will be too. I fold the paper with the cryptic patterns up and slip it into my back pocket. Hey, is there anything that I can do to help you out around here while Dravonia smooths things over with Caius? Hmm, well, there might be an odd job here and there that we could get to. Right there. Aye, aye, see the third one? That's the one. I peer closer into the guts of the ramshackled car. Bite, you see the problem? The intake valve is warped. The combustion chamber can't pressurize. I tap the rusty old engine's third cylinder. You were right. This one is a problem. Bite says that there's a wonky valve, so the pressure will be too low. Hmm. Let me see, let me see. Aeon gently pushes me aside to peer into the engine, practically mounting himself onto the car's bonnet. He digs a claw into the exposed guts of the ramshackled car. Uh, this part? I peer over, squinting at the part Aeon is pointing to. That's the one. I don't think that it's repairable. It needs to be replaced. Byte says that you'll need another valve. We could find one in the black zone. Ah, good show, good show. Here, pass me the wrench. I'll get this loosened up. I lean down into his toolbox, grabbing and passing the requested tool for him. The mold disappears back into the depths of the open car bonnet. His passion for the project is pretty endearing. How long do you think that it'll take before this thing works? Aeon chuckles between strained grunts as he tries to tug the crooked engine part loose. Oh, never, boy, never. Not a task for my lifetime, oh no. I plan to pop my clogs long before I've ever finished something as daft as this, I do. He turns around, wagging his wrench at me. But hear this, boy. Don't you dare let the tribeswoman find me dead without my dignity. I'll not be found in the water markers. Curled up like a dried-up apricot. No, no. Hm. I'll make sure that you're found in a suitably heroic pose. Excellent. Now, give me just a moment. A moment. I'll have this thing loose. I will. His head disappears back into the car's insides as he fumbles around with it. I step away, giving him space. Are you feeling any better now? I am fine. I always was. Just you and your dumb human feelings rubbing off on me. It's no big deal. I'm here for you, Alex. If that means deleting me, you do what you need to. It is okay. Come on, Bite. I don't know how this is going to end, but I could never kill you. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know, sentiment. Not a good look. To be honest, you only want me around to preserve your butthole from the hound. It's a bonus, I'll admit. Yo, Alex. Aeon, you brainy little sump. How's it going? I give the honey badger an acknowledging smile as she marches up to us. Ah, Tucky. Good, good. You well? You well? Busy night, I should say. Yes? Aye. Mating troops all packed up on their way now, though. Then it's over? Think seed sown ground. I can go back into the village without seeing you lot munching away at each other. I can. Bah. You should have tried it sometime, Aeon. Rubbish, rubbish. Last thing that you lot need is a lump like me there, thumping in a softy. I hear there was some trouble today, hmm? Yep, all sorts now, but the chief wants to see Alex. I can't get you. Come on, rat. Caius is still here? Of course he is. We gotta keep him as an ally, so chief wants to straighten things out with you both. Come on. I'll tell Logan too. His class is finishing up soon. He'll join you. I grimace. This is going to be unpleasant. Tomorrow then, Alex. Tomorrow. First light. 
I'll meet you at Logan's home and we'll head straight to the Great Barrier. Should leave plenty of time for your journey to the Devil's Crag, so make sure that you're awake! With a final nod of gratitude to Aeon, I join Taki's side as she leads me away from the Mole's hut. So Caius isn't going to cause a problem? Nah, him and the Chief have a proper family bond, even after everything that they've gone through. That ain't gonna change. Neither of them wanna go to war. But would they? If Caius ever stepped out of line, you're damn right. You know how badly he wants to march a bunch of warriors into the Great Barrier? Dravonia is the only thing stopping him. Seems like Caius doesn't do anything in half measures. So he's got the same beef with the auto monks that he does with Aeon and I. He thinks the old knowledge is bad shit. Whatever caused the Cascade lives in the past, and he says it's all related. I'm telling you, it ain't personal. He's just jumping to conclusions. Come on, you'll see. They're waiting for us. Taki leads me through the labyrinth pathways of the village, weaving between the tribeswoman and their skeptical stares. Their judging glances are more piercing than usual. Any hope that I had of them slowly warming to me has evaporated after Caius's ramblings. Just as I was starting to feel comfortable here. We stop behind the hall, in an area of the village that I've never been to before. Glorious early evening sunlight bathes the distant mountains, and the cool breeze whips delicately at the grass. Caius and Dravonia are standing beneath the shadow of an impressive oak, their backs to me. At the foot of the tree, an etched stone tablet lays against the roots. Kai stands before it, still as a statue. Dravonia is by his side. Both are deep in mourning. Let's come back later. Taki nudges me forward. Nah, it's all good. Chief wants you here. Go. I wince, uncomfortable, disturbing the sensitive moment between brother and sister. It's all right. Kai won't try nothing. I'll go fetch Logan for you. Taki pats my back, then steps away. I'm left alone with the two indomitable chieftains, both at their most vulnerable. It's a strange moment. Despite the danger, I trust that Travonia can keep Caius in line. Taking a nervous breath, I step cautiously closer. Alira, I... It's... Never right, seeing your name in stone. It kills me every day. I'm sorry. You were loved, sister. You were. She should be resting at the lake, not here. She was my sister too. You let her. Her mind was her own. She was fierce. You couldn't have stopped her. Caius's eyes glisten. For all his steadfast conviction, here he just seems broken, his composure balancing on a knife's edge. She loved you more than anything. But she's supposed to be here, scolding us both. His voice cracks. He looks down at the flower in his paws, trembling. I know you hate these Alira, but... He manages to smile. Tradition. He gently drops the lilac blossom onto the mound beneath him, fists clenched. Then he spots me. I flinch, spotting his brow, crunch up in distaste. Alex, Kaius has agreed that you're not a threat to us. I was never a threat. I just get a little jumpy when an axe is lobbed at my face. Reasonable action. A demon in my sister's tribe would have been less threatening. I'm not... Enough. It was a misunderstanding. Kais folds his arms, staring at me. By my sister's word, I'll bear you no ill will, Alex. But your kind doesn't belong here. You're a souvenir of the Black Zone. Didn't your race cause the cascade in the first place? Nobody knows what caused the Cascade. Nobody even knows what it involved, and I was in hibernation all the way through it. Caius chuckled, bemused. Hmm, humans hibernate? No, we had... We had technology, uh, you think. 
I was frozen or asleep for centuries. We don't know. Then you're here for a reason. It can't be good. I agree to be Loken's acolyte. He's going to help me find out the truth. Kai snorts, shaking his head and turning his outraged onto his sister. He isn't telling you everything. You understand that? I don't know what's worse, his hostile mistrust of me or the fact that he's right. Dravonia, however, deflects the question. Of course he isn't. He's a black runner. It is their nature. That's not the point. The black souls have never acted up until the day that he went into them. He's provoking them, through his own fault or not. That could catalyze more incidents. Perhaps a breach next time. A breach? Where the negative ones leave the black zones to poach us from our homes. Dravonia rolls her eyes with exasperation. We've talked about this. Breaches are a myth, Caius. It's never happened. Yeah, demons can't leave the black zones. Alex being here means that things have changed. Not even the black runners know what tricks the negative ones can perform. Those were your words, sister. She stalls. I remember the day that I woke up. She said something similar to Loken, using it to justify locking me away. Kai seems to have a talent for using people's own words against them. That's just the nature of the Black Zones. They're not to be fathomed by anyone except the Black Runners. It doesn't matter. Alex is staying, Kai. He and Loken have their own business to attend to. It is none of our concern. The last thing that I want is to be a danger to anyone. I can accept that you don't mean to be a danger but you've no assurances to give. My sister's interest in your beguiling purpose is her own. The rest of us don't share it. How is anyone supposed to trust you or your business? I kind of feel you have to be cordial. I clench and unclench my fists to stay calm. It's just like Taki said, I don't want this person as an enemy. If you want reassurances, you'll have to let me find them. You'll go rambling through the Black Zones again, then? So they'll react again. More people will die. I had nothing to do with that. Even if I did, I won't let it happen again. We just need to know how I got here. Knowledge isn't your friend, Alex. Folks with a thirst for it lose themselves, and pieces of us all dies with them. The Zephyr made that mistake. With all due respect, Kais, you don't know anything about my people. Neither, it seems, do you. Dravonia grunts sharply, grabbing our attention. Hmm. This is ridiculous, brother. Alex isn't going to bring about another cascade just by existing. He just grunts back, turning away from us both pensively. We've both seen what the Black Zones can do. Both he and Dravonia look back over to Alira's grave. I wince in sympathy. I'm, um... Look, all this aside, I'm sorry about Alira. Dravonia told me. For a moment, I sense Caius's demeanor shift. His guard seems to loosen, though he keeps his gaze on the horizon. She was informed in the end. Everything we had just wasn't enough. I... I couldn't stop her. She wouldn't listen. You've... No idea, Alex. The Black Zones. What they do to us. To our minds. It... He trails off, jaw clenching. Again, I see him as he is. Not just a tough, ruthless chieftain, but someone scared and hurt. If I am overly cautious of the Black Zones and of you, I have a reason. We all do. Thoughtlessly, I say the first thing that comes to my mind in this moment of vulnerability. Yeah, I... When I was there, I felt it. The madness of the Black Zones. I get it. I know. Perhaps I thought that I could bridge some level of understanding between us. Oh, that was bad, wasn't it? It was stupid. Caius's head flicks at me. His pain has evaporated instantly. His eyes are wide and calm and collected, but blazing with outrage. Behind him, Dravonia is still, but I see the subtle twitch of her eye. She knows that I just said something bad. You know? His voice drips with sarcastic vitriol. I didn't mean... He knows. Hear that, sister. He knows. Caius. He knows. He's seen it. The human knows all. 
I consider an apology for offending him, but he wouldn't accept it. He doesn't want to be friends. He just wants to humble me with his pain and hatred. The only thing that I can do to placate his scorn is to let him speak. He inches his face up to me, features scrunched up in distaste. I see it in his eyes, the resentment. I'm everything he loathes in this world. He wants me to just die and join my species in oblivion. No, I'm not joining them. I refuse to back down to him. I refuse to let this place beat me. Have you ever seen an informed? No. Ah, no. Do you know what they do to themselves? No. No. Logan always preferred to show, not tell. They eat themselves, gnawing away like happy rats. In this field, we found Alira. Weeks she'd been gone. We'd begged every black runner from windshield to the spine for help. Then she came back. I was the one who found her, knelt down right there in the mud. She still had three fingers left. Was it four? Sister, was it four? Four. Ah, four. She saw me, of course. It wasn't her. She was gone. I screamed, shook her, cried. She only sat, stared and spoke. She saw me and saw nothing. Sometimes she sang. Not the beautiful melodies she loved. Just nonsense. Gibberish and fantasies. Her voice but twisted into a sick joke. The others wanted a quick mercy, but I was so sure that I could reach her. I wouldn't accept that this thing was my sister. I took her inside and restrained her to the bed. Three nights, Alex. I sat with her, endured her ramblings. I couldn't eat. I slept in her room. I never stopped talking to her. She never stopped preaching back. Then, on the fourth day, I woke up. Could have choked on the stench. The room was thick with it, like rust, metal. I know it well. You never forget that stench. She'd loosen her restraints in the night, see? Got her arm free. But I'd never seen her so happy. I put my knife in her chest. Alex, you don't know. Suddenly a huge weight clamps down on my shoulder. I jump, tugged away from Caius and back into a comforting safe presence. He is mine. I keep my eyes locked with Caius, refusing to blink even as Logan tightens his paw and pulls me beside him. Logan. Caius. You're vouching for him? Yes. And you'll stay with him? Yes. Tomorrow we leave for Devil's Crag. What for? That is Blackrunner business. Dravonia and I watch the two titanic bipeds glaring daggers at one another. Eventually, she clears her throat to get their attention. <clears throat> then it is agreed. This is the end of the matter, Caius. You will leave Alex to his business. We have your word. You have my word. I squint, almost certain that I don't believe him. If this is the path that you've chosen, so be it. Caius shakes his head and steps away from Loken. We'll all be waiting to see where it goes. Yes. Loken's paw on my shoulder gets even tighter. Ah, uh, easy, Loken. I'm fine. Mmm. Are you done then, brother? Alex and Loken will go about their business. We'll go about ours. Fine. Fine. I'll take my wardens back to Riptide Lands. Just as I'm relieved to hear that he's leaving, Dravonia interjects. Stay a while, won't you? A few nights. I try to give Dravonia a pleading look, but she ignores me. What's she thinking? It's summer. I'm sure that there's clan business that you'd like to discuss. Possibly, but... She smiles jovially and links her arms with his, much to his dismay. Excellent. Then I'll have your room prepared. Come, brother. Don't... You don't want... Nonsense. I want to spend time with my brother. 
I want his insight as a chieftain, as an ally. So, stay. He exhales irritably. Fine, if only to keep an ear to this mystifyingly bad ideas of your sister. I'll stay, just a few days. Dravonia begins to lead Caius away. Caius, wait. As the saber-toothed tigers are turning to leave, Caius glances back at Logan. You will not harm Alex. I will not harm Alex. Okay. Reassuring. Caius, I will now ask you a question. What? Oh no. Caius. I shake my head at Logan, eyes wide in horror. The hound determinately ignores me. Tell me how your day was. Outstanding. Okay. With a curious frown at Loken and a final pointed stare at me, Caius turns and heads off with his sister, who eagerly leads him away to the hall. Did you have to ask him? That was not good. Just... Ugh, never mind. I heave with exhaustion, utterly defeated by the picture of the tiger's hated stare. There's no denying it. He frightens me. Not him, perhaps, but knowing that there's someone out there who wants me just to drop dead. It's now over. The adrenaline has finally caught up with me. I feel dizzy. I grind my fingers through my hair, therapeutically, planting myself on the nearby log and sitting, head in my hands, eyes facing downwards. What the hell is happening? There is a thud as Loken sits beside me. His hefty paw rises to my face, and he gently tilts my chin up to face him. I see his eyes glowing with concern. You are okay? Taki told me of. I grab his paw and squeeze it with reassurance. It's fine. I'm fine. You are not fine, Alex. Your hand is shaking. There's something about looking weak in front of Logan that's really uncomfortable to me. I pull my hand away. Just a little freaked out. Caius. He just rolled up ranting and raving. He wanted me dead right then and there. Hmm. Caius's fear of the Zephyr is profound. But you are Draconi. You are a black runner. You are mine. He should not have acted this way. It's not just that. He... I hesitate, then look to the side to check that Dravonia and Caius are out of earshot. He knows that we were in the black zone when the frenzy happened. What if he finds out that it was my fault? All he needs is one excuse. I shake my head. Alex? Nine people died. I might as well have killed them. No. The Black Zones did this. You did not. Many die to the Black Zones. This is not unusual. You must accept this, Alex. I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. I feel like the world is telling me to give up. Finding these answers is important to you. Tell me why this is. I didn't think that I cared when I woke up, but after seeing the Black Zones... It was easier when I was nobody with no identity. Hell, it was freeing. But I am not nobody. I don't know if I'm the last human, or if they're out there somewhere. Or, or what. I just feel... lost. He slips his arm around my shoulder, tugging me closer to him. Many acolytes feel this. We have no place to go. Perhaps the Black Zones are more welcoming to those who are lost. There is a pause. For a moment, I just lean against him and listen to the whispering wind. Alex. Yeah? There will be consequences to the answers you seek. I cannot tell you what choices you must make. You understand this? I understand. Then focus only on the task. You will find the purpose of this algorithm. For all his reassurances, my mind still churns with abstract chaos. I grasp for a change of topic. Something else to focus on. Why did Dravonia have to ask Caius to stay? The sooner he fucks off, the better. Our chief wishes to keep Caius in her sight. She must be sure that he will not pose a threat to us. Caius is powerful. His clan is large. We must be careful. I don't want him as an enemy. But if he's going to cause problems, I believe that he will not betray the trust of his sister. And if he does, we'll kick his ass. Bites feeling optimistic, at least. Gods, this is such a mess. I feel terrible. Mm. The hound's ears flick. 
Alex, I will distract you from this mess. Quite suddenly, he brings his paw up suddenly to my head and weaves his paws through my hair. Whoa, hey, what are you doing? He smirks and smothers me with his affection, grinding his fingers through my scalp and petting me happily. Good human. I gingerly shake him off, trying to hide my flustered smile. Cut it out. I'm not in the mood. No, you will enjoy this distraction. I begrudgingly let him pamper me, trying to maintain my broody demeanor, but he wins me over with his head pats. It actually feels really nice. He digs his fingertips firmly into my head and rubs his thumbs behind my ears. I shut my eyes, humming happily. Urgh. I didn't think that I'd love head scratches as much as he does. Laughing, I reach up to his paw and clasp it in both of mine, tugging it down and holding it in front of me. I can almost hold onto a single one of his fingers with my entire hand. I guess I feel better. Perhaps I will take you home and distract you further. I bring my hands up to my chest, feeling his thundering snarls beneath his fur. Hmm, worth a shot, big guy. Hmm, come, we will return home. As he lifts me to my feet, his paw dances down to my butt and squeezes greedily. With insistence, Logan leads me away from the village and back in the direction of the lodge. We walk in silence, and the haunting implications of today's encounter grow louder. My stress headache is getting worse. The only thing that seems to keep it at bay is Loken. Talking to him, being with him. Just him. How was your class? The children learned what lakes to fish in today. They were taught the skill of preparing fish for cooking. Next, I will take them to the lake to apply this skill. Hey, you sound like a great teacher. Did Milo rejoin the class? He did. It was good that you found him. Did he, um, behave? Mm hmm. In class, was he good? You are concerned for him? S don't read too much into that. I was just asking. You still believe that this boy will make a great black runner? Yes, but, uh, well, he's kind of crazy. I found him back at the border where the demon nearly grabbed him. This is not unusual. Many children who possess the four are drawn to the black zones. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You used to hide in them as a kid. I did, as many others have. Continue to assess this boy, but you will not train him yet. We will first discover where you have come from. Only this and nothing more. Hey, uh, why does Milo have hair? Aeon says some children are born with his head hair. He calls it a mutation. It is rare. The children often lose this head hair when they are older. It is the same mutation that you have, though you have not lost yours. I frown at him, confused. You are okay? My hair isn't a mutation. Almost all of us had it. All humans? That is... Hmm. I am confused. This is only what Aeon has said. He also says that there are other mutations. Like what? Flat nails, smaller feet, rounder eyes. They are rare, though it is common for black runners to possess these traits as children. Did you? I do not know. If I had, these were too small to notice. Are you thinking what I am thinking? Yeah, human heritage. Maybe all black runners have it to some degree. But how? That mean bipeds were part of the Zephyr. Not just part of them, fully integrated, enough for breeding to occur. Then, why do we only remember humans? Hmm, there is more to this. Great, another mystery to add to the list. Logan and I make the trip back home wordlessly as the sun begins to dip over the mountainous horizon. I will light a fire. Sure thing, big guy. Logan lets me pass and shuts the door behind us. Tail whips happily behind him. I move to sit on his bed and he pulls me back by my waist and curls his arms around me. I chuckle, compressed into his rumbling form. His muzzle comes to rest on the top of my head. Today's been rough. Logan hums, unsure how to console me. And by the way, Aeon said that he'd take me to see the Autumn Monks in the morning, before we go.
Logan's arms tighten around me and he growls. Hey, relax. It'll be fine. He's just going to run a few tests with their machines. Make sure that I'm, you know, fully human. Hmm, okay. We will visit the Great Barrier first, but we need not speak of this now. Tonight? I yelp as he smears his tongue affectionately across my cheek, leaving a cool wet smear. You are mine. I pet his paw as he steps away. His tail thwacks my backside and he moves over to the fire pit. Soon enough, the fireplace flickers to life, bathing his cool arctic fur in a supple auburn glow. He looks over, giving me a toothy grin. He seems eager for us to give in to our urges again tonight. We're off on a journey tomorrow. It might be the last chance that we get. Perhaps I should set the pace for us, show him his little human has an alpha streak of his own. Oh. Uh, keep it in your pants. Ugh. Eh, whatever. Hey. Mm hmm? Strip. Mm hmm? You heard me. Alex. Come on, big guy. Show me what you got. Logan looks away for a moment, ears flattening. Wow, he's really flustered. At first, I worry that he might be genuinely uncomfortable. But then he smiles. You would like to look? I'll do more than just look. Ugh. Logan gets slowly up to his feet, locking his eyes with me. I sit up on the bed, grinning. He unbuckles a strap around his chest first. There is little grace or style in his stripping, but it's pleasant to watch nonetheless. I take in the sight of him stripping down to his loincloth, imagining myself pressed right up into it. Come on, that too. You are impatient. I get up to my feet, strolling over to him. So are you. Bet you've been pent up a long time, huh? Pent up? Yeah. You said it was five years since you last saw Ryan. Must have been tough. I reach him, brushing my fingers against the hem of his loincloth and slipping them beneath. The heat of his junk radiates through the cloth as it begins to bulge. Is it disrespectful to, uh, take care of things yourself? Hmm. It is. I'm actually surprised that he knows what I meant. Bet you want me to take care of you instead. Huh? I do. My hand slips down his furred waistline and my fingers slide against his burning member. His jaw quivers. You wanna mate with me? Mmm. You always wanted to, didn't you? Err. Let me hear it, big guy. Alex. I did always want that. I tug his loincloth free, leaving him nude in front of me. His hazy scent makes my head go numb as his tool rises to meet my grasp. Good boy. Mm hmm. I am good? You are. His tail begins to wag happily. Cool. His paw comes to rest at my sides, sliding upwards. My shirt rides up with them. Alex, you must undress too. Sit with me by the fire. I snicker, letting him tug my top off. His roaming paws grope my chest and shoulders, making me shiver with pleasure. Mmm, you have no fur. You like that? I do. I can taste any part of you. Encouraged, I hook my thumbs around my belt line and tug my leggings off. His growl deepens. Oh, this teasing has made me pretty hard. Err, come to me, human. Gah. He snatches me by the waist and drops to one knee, eagerly burring his muzzle against my member, nose flaring. I gasp, flinching at the vibrations of his hungry growls against my most intimate parts. Mmm, okay, easy. Mmm, this is a good scent. Fuck, of all the possible scenarios that I might have pictured for the end of the world, I doubt that it involved having an eight-foot biped ravenously sniffing my junk. He takes me by the waist and guides me down, sitting cross-legged and wedging me 
comfortably in his lap. It's impossible to ignore his hard manhood pushing into my back, but Logan seems more interested in cuddling right now, his arms locked around my belly and his muzzle resting on top of my head. I hum blissfully and sink back into his hold, though managed to free my arm enough to reach up and pet his muzzle. Good hound. Good human. It's dreamy, his warmth, his taunt hold of me, the heat of the fire in front of us. My churning thoughts are still again. Alex. Hmm? Stay. I frown. Uh, stay where? Stay. His hold of me tightens. Uh, hey, I'm not going anywhere. You will not leave? I guess it wouldn't be Logan without his abrupt mood swings. No, I'm staying. When you find the answers you seek, you will stay. Others have left. I just pet his muzzle again, and I feel him lean into it. I'll stay with you. Mmm. Okay. You are small. I like you too. Cool. He shifts, and his grip of me loosens. You are comfortable? Very. Er, I could stay here all night. Mmm. I could also do this. We will sit like this more and chat. You are good at talking. And you are interesting to talk to. Logan's paw moves up to my face and he cups my chin. I smile, tenderly kissing it. This mouth is good at talking. His fingertips prod and poke at my lips, parting them gently. This mouth is good at kissing. Uh... I feel his teeth bear against the side of my face. It is a good mouth. Uh-huh. Alex. Yeah? Let me fuck this mouth. My heart races with excitement. Now? Oh my god. Now. No. I snicker, reaching up and gently clasping his paw with my hand, pulling it back to my lap and petting it. You're such a horn dog. Err. How about another time? Yeah, it's been a rough day. I'm not sure that I'm in the mood. Plus, I have a headache and other excuses. Mmm. Okay. I am happy just to hold you. Logan's huge paw claps onto my hands. His little finger hooks around mine. Mmm. Little hands. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy these little hands. And I enjoy these big paws. Throat rumbling happily, Logan leans down and rests his muzzle on my shoulder, nuzzling his face into the side of my cheek. I'm not sure how long that we sit there. After a while, I shut my eyes and just let myself fall into a sleepy trance, hypnotized by the heat and comfort. It's been a rough day. It has. Everything's a mess. There are challenges. I'm tired. Rest. I shut my eyes. So, Caius. It was only a matter of time before we ran into someone like him. He really blames me for everything. There's no way that he's going to just let that go. You represent something that he's afraid of. To him, you are an artifact of the Black Zones. He doesn't hate you. He's just terrified of what you might discover. Ignorance is the order of the world. And the roots of the power for tyrants like him. If he thinks for a moment that he has a shot of getting rid of us consequence-free, he'll take it. He may not be totally unreasonable. Maybe we can win him over? We're better off avoiding him altogether. That won't be a problem, then. Tomorrow we're off to the Devil's Crag. This is a city that you slept in for centuries. Think about it, Alex. All the answers that we need could be there. Are you nervous? Hmm. Terrified. But... This is all that we have. Maybe we'll find out about you, too. Speaking of which, did you find out if you're the reason that I heal so quickly? No, sorry. I don't know if it's coming from you or me. Just another thing that we'll need to find out for ourselves. And the other humans, too? 
We need to find them. Don't give me that. They could be alive somewhere. Alex. It's possible. But very unlikely. I'll take it. That seems like a painful path to follow. For all we know... <laughs> what the hell was that? What? Loken? I stare blearily from my sleep, my voice weak with fatigue. We're in his bed. He's laying behind me, his muzzle tucked against my shoulder, and his arms locked around my waist. He's growling threateningly, as though sensing an intruder. What's wrong? He just growls again, tightening his hold. I can't tell if he's actually awake. I look around. The lodge is empty. Eh, Loken, there's no one there. He whines, holding me tighter. I can feel the anxiety in his grasp. I reach up groggily and pet his muzzle. Shh. Mmm. It's fine. I'm right here. He leans into my touch and tenderly licks my hand. I shut my eyes again as I feel him steadily relax. I melt back into his warm hold, his soft fur and his gentle breathing. What happened? Sorry, Logan woke me up. He was, uh, sleep growling, I think. I didn't realize that was a thing. Could just be that Logan thing. Although, I don't think that he's done it before tonight. Ugh, anyway, I'm not saying that I'm expecting to find humans alive. Just, you know, let's not rule out the possibility. We don't know exactly how long you were in hibernation. It could be longer than we thought. Or shorter. If there were humans still alive, don't you think that the clans would have encountered them by now? Everything outside of Ilea is cut off by the Black Zones. What's beyond them? Most of the planet is beyond the reach of the tribes. Hmm. If we could find out the nature of... Ugh, again? Easy. I feel his teeth bared against my neck and he squeezes me. I reach up again and softly stroke his snout. Mmm. Shh. He licks my ear tenderly. Just once, then goes still. Is this going to keep happening? You need to sleep. He might just be anxious after Caius. Want me to switch off your auditory senses? No, I mean, no, it's fine. I don't mind. Let him wake me. If you say so. Well, big day tomorrow, Alex. First, Aeon's examination. We'll finally learn what's going on inside that head. Then, off to the Devil's Crag. Whatever answers are there, that's where we will find them. I'll see you on the other side. Are you? Do you know what happened to me? The frenzy. You killed those people. It was you. Was it? Please just, just tell me. Fine. We'll figure this out ourselves. And that's actually where I'm going to leave it for today. 
So... <sighs> so... We were finally introduced to another... Uh, biped, I guess. Um, to the chief of the Riptide clan, no less. Who is the brother of Dravonia, no less. <sighs> Obviously that could have probably gone better. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> That was probably unavoidable, the confrontation. Ugh. Anywho. So... Yeah. To be honest, he does have a point. All... Evidence... Of what's happening seems to point to Alex. And... Considering that we know more than Caius, I'm pretty sure that it's safe to say that everything that's happening right now is kind of Alex's, um, fault? Well, maybe not his fault. Um, uh, more like, um, it's because of him. So, because he was awoken, because, um, he decided to, you know, interact with the rhinestone dish panels, or the memory banks, data banks, whatever, um, things started to get riled up. So, although Logan was the one that awoke uh, Alex, uh, it was Alex who is the one that is intentionally searching for information that caused them to touch the panel, that caused the black zones, or at the very least, the demons in the black zones to get riled up. So, the whole theory of the demons being artificial intelligences, or at least some sort of mechanical monstrosity that has a form of intelligence, seems to be correct. And I suppose I could uh, share my theory about how the Black Zones work. So, my theory is that the Black Zones themselves are sort of like, um, like, sort of like areas of coverage. So, if you're from the US, and I don't, I'm pretty sure it's probably the same. Uh, outside of the US, but um, like if you were to look at your cell phone carrier's area of coverage, and they're basically all the same by now, you will see that it's like a map of the United States and certain other areas that have like the color of um, the cell phone carrier uh, or provider, I guess. And um, it usually is covering the whole of the United States, but there's certain pockets of it where the satellite coverage doesn't reach or and um, I have a feeling that where the tribes are and where the black zones do not reach are where this sort of uh, coverage area doesn't extend to. So for example, the majority of the area that is covered or that is a black zone happens to be the cities. So if we're talking about an artificial intelligence or at least something technological that is alive, it would stand to reason that their the area where they reside would be the area where this sort of cell phone coverage area is. So if they are connected, meaning that they act sort of like a hive mind, because that's actually what I should have said first, um, it stands to reason that they can only remain within this area where there is coverage for them, where they exist, where their whatever they are is being broadcast. So, I kind of see it like that. Like, there are a whole bunch of, maybe, like, insects that are connected through some sort of hive mind. Like, they are, maybe they're separate beings, but they, they reside in this area of coverage, you know, something like that. Anyways, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any other theory about that right now. Um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, I am curious if perhaps the algorithm represents what these demons are. Because if you think about it, an AI, although, although uh, it is technically alive, it would be still composed of ones and zeros. It just is composed of ones and zeros that form thoughts and things like that. So what if the algorithm 
is what is representative of what a demon is. So for example, what if the algorithm that um, Alex currently has is just a portion of what a demon is? So like, maybe that's why the demon was able to sort of know where Alex was going to be. So, or maybe, well, yeah, huh, maybe, maybe that's why the demon was toying with uh, Milo because it recognized that something that is very similar to it is inside of Alex. So to me, that that seems like an interesting prospect. It also is a very dangerous prospect if they find the other half of the algorithm. So we'll have to see. Anyway, so, you know, write down in the comments what you think. Again, if you already know what's going to happen, do not spoil it. If you spoil it, because I know what would be spoilers, trust me, I will delete your comment. This is your only warning. Again, if you, and if you keep posting, then I will just hide your comments from the channel forever. Only warning. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so write down in the comments what you think, and thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Soul Creek yourself, you can do so by going down into the link in the description, which should have a Twitter link, which should have a direct link to itch.io, where you can download the game and play it. And you can, you know, see the, the naughty scenes. And in case Twitter doesn't exist anymore, you can just go to itch.io yourself and download it from there. And I will also post a link down for their coffee page, where you can you know, donate to them if you like this visual novel if, and if you want to, you know, show them your support. Along with my coffee, in case you want to keep supporting me like you guys did that one time. Um, uh, really, the only reason I'm reading this is because of the very large and very generous coffee donation from all of you and from some people from Twitter. But yeah, so if you want to keep doing that or if you want to do that, and you know, again, you know, by all means, do it. I will be very, very appreciative of it, of it. But yeah, anyway, so I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.